set of you that you've not noticed. Uh, musically gifted in every way, um, gifted in so many more ways than musical. And being their youth pastor, I'm going to take credit for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it, makes, it makes ministry a, a lot easier when you come into um, a new ministry and the kids are already so talented. So many of them are, are willing to serve so eagerly. Um, it's been a true blessing uh, to have been their youth pastor for the short time that I have been their youth pastor. Uh, and if you look at your bulletin, I kind of did a little play on, on what we're going to be doing for the rest of this service today. Um, and, and I just want to pull the audience real quick, if you don't mind. For, for those of you who are, who are older than me, 37 and up, how many of you miss something about your childhood, show of hands. Any of you miss something about your childhood? I don't care what it is, you just miss something. I'm 37, my childhood still feels like a long time ago. I, I, I remember missing things. And it's in that spirit that we're about to do what we're going to do. So when we're talking with the students about how they wanted their Sunday to go, they wanted this to happen. They wanted it. So we're going to have a Moments with Children plus age. So all of the youth age students, would you please come down and join me at the front of the church, please? Come on and join me, kids. Come on and have a seat, guys. Look at all these growing teenagers. No, I mean, you, can, you, can, you guys can have a seat. You're, I'll, I'll move back so you can, so you can kind of have room here. There, there's almost room for everybody. So these are a majority of our students here at Central Trinity, and I want to share with you just a couple of things before we get into uh, allowing them to share some of their thoughts and feelings. So in the Connect newsletter, I wrote a small article about why I love youth ministry. One of the verses that I've always gone to uh, is found in, in the book of 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 4, verse 12, which says, Let no one despise you or youth. But set the believers an example in speech, and conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And as I've studied that verse over the years, something really dawned on me that I, I thought how applicable it is to all of us today. Because, hey students, did you know that the Bible defines youth? No, no reaction. Um, <laughs> so, in this particular verse, when it's speaking of youth... It's speaking to Timothy, who's probably close to 40 years old, and it's referring to him as a youth. So congratulations if you're 40 or under. You're a youth, and you should be up here with us. <laughs> the idea of what's being said in the scripture is this. There's always somebody younger than you, and there's always someone older than you. Did you happen to see the acolytes today? <laughs> Compared to them, I'm a youth. <laughs> but the truth of it is, if you are an older individual in this place today, those who are under you, you would consider them youth. And for those teenagers, when they look down to those children who were just up here a little while ago, they just see them as younger kids. But as these youth grow and get older, and they become the adults that we're praying that God will allow them to become, they're going to be looking at everyone underneath them, considering them youth. Not as in the youth group that we've labeled it in the, in the church from 7th to 12th grades, but youth meaning younger than ourselves. So as we're talking through some questions here today, I want you to think in your own mind how you would answer these questions if you would be considered a youth today. And remember, I don't care how old you are, there's someone older than you, and in their eyes you are a youth. So as we have that discussion today, I, I want to ask students this question. What's your favorite part about Central Trinity? First hand I saw was Olivia. I am. Yes. <laughs> I, you're all my favorites. And Callie only gave me one dollar so I could only have <laughs> of our students' hearts when it comes to ministry 
and what it comes to being a youth in today's world, I want you to hear from their hearts. And here's the first question I have for them. What do you find to be the most difficult about leading a Christian life in today's society and culture? Not everyone at once. When people question, like they ask, like I had this kid in my social studies class, and he tried to tell me, he goes, there's just a whole bunch of these random elements flying around and they're just joined together. Um, by the way, he has an F in that sense. <laughs> so, like, so unbelief, people, other people that don't believe, makes it difficult for us to live a Christian life. What about any of these? What about the upperclassmen in the uh, rows here? Do you find some things difficult about leading a Christian life in today's culture and society? Uh, some of the kids who, uh, well, I'm Christian, but they're not going to church and they're not doing the best making the best decisions, and they're like, well, you can do this, it's not wrong in the eyes of God, or whatever, but, I don't know. Okay. So I think, to, to clarify what he's saying is, it's those who claim to be a Christian in name, but don't actually fulfill it and live out the Christ, the Christian life as laid out in the book of Um, Social media may not be like the best influence on everyone. Social media, and, to, and to, again to illustrate to everybody, everyone in the crowd that's an adult, would you just raise your hand if you have a Facebook account? Kids, do you see that? Okay, you all, did everyone look around and see all those hands? Watch this. Hey, young students, how many of you have Facebook? Do you see the difference? There's just this this cultural and societal difference that is uh, coming all over our students and they are uh, under such duress because of the social media implications that they're with. And, and, and I don't say this in a rude way towards us adults, but we're starting to become out of touch because we think we're hip. I have Facebook, I'm hip, I'm in social media. There's like five other ones that I've never, I can't even tell you what they are, I don't even have. Um, because you have to keep up with these trends and, and these are what our students face on a daily basis. It's just hard to keep up with them. Um, so I've asked you what your favorite part about being a central trinity is, and Olivia gave the best answer ever. <laughs> and I agree with it completely. Thank you. But I do want to ask the rest of you to give you an opportunity. And can you share with our church family today something that you really enjoy about our church family and the church services that we have here? Serious answers. Um, I, I like how uh, uh, that they, since of the new website they have, that they post recordings of the service, and I really enjoy doing the camera on the mic. If you didn't know it, Walker's a nerd, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a like that, and I appreciate that. You're a nerd, too? I yeah, me too. Well, I like it when the pastor was in like Pastor Steve, Pastor John make jokes and stuff, and I like it with the music. And I also like doing the camera, but I do it more often than the brother here. <laughs> Not now. Sibling rivalry, understand? Uh, anybody else? Yes, Lucas, my main man out there. I love the support that comes out of your church family. Absolutely. Anyone else want to throw an answer that before we move on? We're good. All right, here we're going to. The next one. How has Central Trinity impacted your faith? How has our church, our church family, made an impression upon your faith? What do you um, I really appreciate um, when, the, when they sponsor our church camps, so especially today when they do like, the most important thing. Um, that's really special to us when we get to camp. Um, just this past summer, my cousin Bree got to come with me, and that was probably my favorite year of everyone. You guys again. <laughs> <laughs> How they impacted your faith, seriously. Okay. The music. Started going to youth group. Um, I, I 
together and unanimously decided they wanted to do a mission trip this year rather than go to creation. That's unheard of in youth ministry. Not only because it was unanimous, but most of the time when students want to do the fun stuff rather than missional work, and our students came together and said, no, we want to go on a mission trip this year. And they came together in that consensus. Church family, you have an amazing youth group here. You have an amazing church.
And God, as our church family, help us to remember to lift up our students and remember that they truly are an important part of our life here at CT. And Father, I do pray that you would bless me as I lead them. Uh, Father, please help me to, to teach them and to help them to grow in their faith. And Father, if there's maybe some that don't have their faith started yet, Father God, that they would find that saving faith in you. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to have this time with you today. Oh, Father, thank you so much for the blessing of youth here at Central Trinity. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And we ask it in the name of Jesus.